This is Maurice Drain Smith, nuclear popcorn, right back at you. And uh, if you don't know about these two guests, you will soon. Unless you've been hiding out under some rock, you haven't seen my beautiful guest here, which is Preeti Uppala. Yes. She's Miss International everywhere, but I'm going to see <laughs> if I have it correct this time. Australia, India. Miss India International and Miss India Australia. Cool, very cool and also cool accent as well. Thank and you. And you're looking very nice. Are those uh, your designs or? No, uh, I uh, bought this in Europe, I think. And, oh, very uh, cool. Yeah, I just love, uh, you know, unique one-off type of uh, uh, accessories and dresses and I like bling bling and something shiny, yeah. Well, you definitely got, the, got your bling Thank bling. Thank you. In. And we have the ever effusient, incredible Ricky B. How's it going, sir? Doing good, how are you? Doing good. I want to bring the most incredible people to this show. So we call this show Nuclear Popcorn, because if you notice, a kernel is not really real until it mm -hmm. explodes. I mean, even a mustard seed starts small, but it gets big. Everyone on this show is either big, getting big, in the yard of getting big, and we're just trying to bring it to you so you can get big. They'll tell you how to do it. They give the ins and outs of Hollywood and hopefully you'll be able to sidestep or jump on top of the next big thing and ride it and just explode yeah. like a nuclear popcorn. Sounds good. Yeah, what, what's on your uh, horizon these days? Wow, you know, I am really in the mindset that it's time to take back your power as an artist and an actor here in Hollywood and really uh, produce your own content. You know, create your own stuff, write your own stuff. I never used to be that way. Mm -hmm. I always thought that I would walk off a plane and just walk into a set of a blockbuster I really had you know I really thought that that was going to be my the way things were going to go for me but uh, there's no need to wait you can uh, meet your destiny I think halfway mm. so that's what I've done uh, so a little bit of background about myself I'm from Australia I used to be an investment banker but I uh, gave that up to pursue my dream of being a, uh, a writer producer and a actor and I won a scholarship to come out here uh, to New York a few years ago and it's been an incredible journey. And uh, recently, I've been just producing my own own uh, content uh, on various different channels and levels, and collaborating with some incredible people. So it's it's been fantastic in that way, very empowering. And uh, you're in control. And I think it just you sow a lot of seeds. You know, your mm -hmm. your projects, uh, the 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 ones that you do create and produce yourself, they end up reaching the people that you need to reach and the, the future projects will come from that. I think you do it in parallel with trying to get that elusive break, which might, you never, we never know when it's gonna come and uh, you don't Hopefully want to be, this is that break. Hopefully maybe, but you don't want to be wasting break. another five years trying to, you know, waiting for that while you can do so much on your own and you never know, it might be your own project that might, be the, be the, 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 yeah, you never know. Well, I'm hoping this would be your catalyst. Um, for, because you're already <laughs> popping and exploding everywhere. Yeah, I've done, a, it's so funny because I've, I'm, I'm famous in different countries in the world for completely different things. That's good, that's called diversification. That's true, talk about like in China, I became an overnight star for being a part of a major film festival where I was awarded by Mr. Jackie Chan himself for a bunch of film awards. Mm -hmm. And then in Russia, I became famous for hosting a, a MTV, huge, right? well, uh, MTV Russia did a story on me, but uh, I hosted the Moscow International Film Festival. I was the official English host. Wow. And uh, so MTV Russia did a story on me because I spoke Russian for them. I did, a, I gave a speech in Russian language. And you it, speak it, Russian? No, but I prepared for, for <laughs> that, you know, for that talk. So it was a spiritual speech about spirituality. It was just wow. crazy. The people went nuts. And then India, of course, the beauty queen, and then Australia, that too. Um, so yeah, and it's pretty incredible. And can just all, off the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah. So uh, all different kinds of things, but. This is the big dog, Hollywood. You know, this is where it's at. So, this is where you got to uh, be. Yeah. If, you, if you're winning or in it to win it, this is where you got to be. Absolutely. 
And speaking about in it to win it, mm. Mr. Ricky B, you've been doing some yeah. pretty Ooh. incredible things. I yeah. met you at the horror festival out there in, um, begins Monrovia. with the M, Monrovia wow. last yeah. year, and that was cool. I met up with our friend Joanna Ray. She's like one of the most busiest people I've ever seen. Yeah, she's and busy. I've noticed you've been pretty shooting and firing your fireworks. I'm getting ready to put Joanna Ray in my next movie. Okay, now what's that gonna be? Uh, well, you know, with what you were saying, as far as producing and directing your own stuff, I've started producing and directing my own films. Um, the next movie that I'm going to produce and direct is called The Conspirator. Mm. Um, I'm going that. to be starring in it, and Joanna Ray is going to be playing a character in that as well. Mm. Um, this is the second movie I've directed and produced. I just finished another movie I directed and produced called It Was an Accident. It's about two detectives who, uh, uh, basically one of the detectives makes a mistake and it costs him more than his job. Mm. Reason why I'm plugging that is with everything that's going on today now with police, mm -hmm. my movie I put on Amazon, mm -hmm. it's totally doing well. Like right. within the last uh, couple of weeks because of everything that's going off in the news, mm -hmm. my movie's uh, streamed like about another 400 minutes or something. Wow. Like I think I was at like, because uh, the way Amazon works is you get paid off of streaming minutes. Mm -hmm. So I was at about 20, <laughs> yeah, I was, about, I was about 20 something minutes. Uh -huh. um, the movie is 10 minutes and 57 seconds long. Mm -hmm. So at 22 minutes, I believe two people rented it. Well, after all this stuff with the news that's going on, Cop killing. Yeah, like I'm at 400 and something minutes wow. now, totally stream. So I think, you know, another 20 or 30 people have watched the movie because of what's going on in the news. Mm -hmm. It's very timely. Yeah, and um, the reason why I did that was to basically show a side from the police officer's view. Because mm -hmm. everything that's going on today with Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and Blue Lives Matter, mm -hmm. um, my movie is a take from the actual police officer who did the wrong. Okay. So this is a view of what's the police officer thinking? Wow. Yeah, I know the police officers or Blue Lives Matter has their say, say so. Black Lives Matter has their, has their say so. You know, the victims always have their say so. The victim's parents all, all, always have their say so. What about the police officer mm. that actually did the shooting? Mm -hmm. So that's, so this movie is a viewpoint from there. Totally and I different. think, yeah. Scenario. Yeah, and I, think that, angle. and I think that's one of the reasons why it's doing well is because <clears throat> it's from that angle. It's from the actual officer that, mm -hmm. you know, I you guess know, I'll say committed the crime. <laughs> you look at it from the horse's mouth and see exactly. what he's saying. Yeah. And, Good uh, or bad. And, and the reason why I started uh, producing my own stuff is I, uh, you know, being at that uh, Action on Film Festival where I met you, mm -hmm. um, Dale uh, Weston, who is the creator of that, he said, Richie, why don't you start doing your own stuff? And, you know, being an actor out there, trying to find my own gigs, mm -hmm. I'm doing pretty well. I mean, getting gigs on my own, but it's, I'm noticing that because the ball is in my court now, I can make the money that I want to make. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and put it on Amazon. I can go ahead and try to get my movie on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and try to get my movie monetized on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about someone doing that for me. Right. So um, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, as, as actors out there, we need to jump on the opportunity to do this stuff on our own. Because somebody out there mm -hmm. might see us and hire us or, like I'm trying to do, make money on my own, on my own yeah. film. But um, what's just exciting about it is the process. You know, I've never directed before, mm -hmm. so dealing with actors was something that I needed to understand and come to grips with, being able to deal with a person like myself. Quick We've question. got excuses. We've got... <laughs> mm. Quick, quick question. Yeah. Now you're saying actors have a lot of excuses. Now what about the person that's not on that level yet to be beset with the excuse mode one that hasn't quite become an actor, and they're like, man, he's producing. Mm. I haven't even started acting. How, what, what would, what's your advice on how to get into the business in the first place, and then once they get into it, become a director? What, what should the skill set mm. dynamic be to well, become a Ricky B or to become a pre -T? Well, uh, based on personal experience, I started doing background work. Mm. So I started at central casting like everybody else. 
and you know, got in doing background. Mm -hmm. Got my three SAG vouchers uh, doing background, joined the Screen Actors Guild after I got my three vouchers and slowly but surely started booking, you know, under five lines from there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I would recommend anybody that's getting a start, just start off doing extra work but start off at central casting. Reason why central casting is central casting is the major, uh, I'll say, casting company for all the films and all the movies out here in Hollywood. Like central is the major extra casting, yeah. So if you don't know anyone, that's a great start. If you know some filmmakers or if you know some independent filmmakers out there, try to hook up with them and see if maybe you can you know, be featured in their film. Um, if there's any individuals that you know that are thinking about doing a film and need someone to help them, whether it be do the camera or help write or pick up trash, any, any way to volunteer and just be a part of any set is a good way to get started because um, out here in this business, we all pretty much do everything. I mean, you're an actor and you're also doing your own interview show. Um, you're an actress and you're also a beauty queen and you're also producing. Mm -hmm. I'm an actor that, you know, has uh, an agent that sends me out for commercial auditions and I'm also you know trying to produce my own things because I want to be like Tom Cruise because yeah. I heard you know Tom Cruise is a true movie star and he only started off by just doing movies and producing his own movies and putting money into his own movies mm -hmm. so hearing that oh I guess I better start doing my own stuff and producing my own stuff too because that's the route you should take or that's the route I heard people take. So that's the route I'm choosing to take. It might be a little different than Pretty's. It might yeah. be a little different than someone else's. It might be a little different than yours. And I'm just choosing the route that sounds great for me. Okay, now acting schools. You've been to yeah. one on Scouts. I've been to so many. And yeah. you. Would, what would you say is the tech, or is there any technique, or do you just come straight off of your soul I, you and know, just do your yeah, role? Yeah, acting schools are great. I got my training in Australia, which is famous for their training there. Far better, far superior, I think, than the training that you get over here, oh, to okay. be quite honest, at least in LA. I think New York has some better schools. Mm -hmm. Here, it's everything is geared towards camera, on screen. Mm -hmm. So you might want to think about getting into a, a specifically an on-screen, on-camera class rather than just a scene study class because at the end of the day, you know, for commercials and all that, that's a specific kind of acting. You do have to know how to how you look on camera for commercials, how you deliver the line. It's not scene study, so that's helpful. And for TV, of course, this is, I mean, the TV, industry is huge mm -hmm. and uh, it's as lucrative now as movies and now mm -hmm. forget about movie stars people just want to be TV stars you know mm -hmm. and for that you need to know how to act to that so you know I've done some on-camera training and that's always been very helpful um, do work casting director workshops I've done those they've been helpful mm -hmm. uh, it's I, I for me personally we'll go to film festivals because I've done that ar around the world mm -hmm. and if you can get a chance go to some of them network with other uh, producers, writers, directors, you know, uh, it helps a lot because they will, uh, you know, you just meet the right people who are in the business working on that level mm -hmm. rather than just other aspiring actors, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, networking is good, but the quality has to be there mm -hmm. or else they, it's just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I totally agree because, I mean, you can network with mm. actors that don't have Screen Actors Guild yeah. cars mm -hmm. and you can network with actors that don't go to acting classes and you can network with actors that all they do is talk about acting yeah. but do not practice acting. That's right. Those aren't the people that you should be no. hanging out with. No. Because you're already uh, further up and you need to find somebody who's actually done what you want to do mm -hmm. rather than uh, somebody that you might have to take along with you. So, yeah. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of what the guys yeah. used to say when I was growing up. Game knows game. Yeah. For, for instance, you're not going to go and jump into a pickup game with people who can't play ball. No, no, no. Unless you just want to destroy everybody just for your... You know, you're, you're, you're not going to get pressed or learn anything or pick up any new skills. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, networking is a funny word that's used around very loosely in L.A. Everyone's, oh, networking, or I'm going to some networking event. You have to be so careful. I would say that 90% of the so-called networking 
events are it's it's just fluff mm -hmm. you know and the real people are not going to these events you know you might accidentally meet them at some classy uh, fundraiser or some gala somewhere but uh, they they're not you know it it doesn't work like that so you have to be very careful with how you spend your time and energy you have to make sure you're not a strange person in a strange bedfellow situation. Yeah, yeah. So look, look people up and see what they've done. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, whenever I meet people, I always look them up. And I'm like, oh, okay, they said they were blah, blah, blah. But, you know, <laughs> there's, there's nothing. It's one credit. I'm like, okay, now I know where mm -hmm. they're at. And mm -hmm. I can, I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that road over there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what about producers, directors? Would, what would you say to, you know, people who are getting all anxious, you know, because people are sitting there watching you and they're like, okay, well, I wanna do that. I like the fact that they know the journey, they know what they gotta do, mm -hmm. they're taking the bull by the horns. Yeah, yeah. What kind of directors should I look for? Who should I avoid? How can I tell the difference between a snake and a upcoming mm. professional? Well, I can help you with that. Um, I work with someone that we get along. Mm. Um, we have the same kind of vision. Um, Miosha Bean is just someone that I connect with. That's why I work with her. That's why we produce and direct and shoot together. Um, I can't explain it. It's just one of those things where we just click. So that's why I work with her. That's why I will continue shooting with her. That's why she is my cinematographer, cinematographer for my movies. Um, I can't really explain it, but when you have that connection or you have that, um, rapport yeah, with someone yeah, 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 yeah. you just have to go yeah, with it it's made it's done like, mm -hmm. stick with it because it's rare I lucked to out. it's rare to find we I think even the relationships are the same thing you know mm -hmm. uh, we think oh yeah there's like uh, plenty of fish and there's uh, billions of people but it's not easy to find that chemistry or genuine connection and when you do find it don't let go hang on to it yeah mm -hmm. it's worth it yeah cool so and make sure they know what they're doing yes mm -hmm. Like my director storyboards, mm. she knows what she's doing. That helps me out a wow. lot. There's a tons of cinematographers out here that don't storyboard. Now tell people what, what you mean by storyboard. A uh, storyboard is you um, basically create the story through illustrations. Mm. Um, so what she does is she storyboards every scene. So if there's 10 scenes in a movie, she will illustrate every scene and put it in a storyboard mm -hmm. or put it on a board with pictures of every scene. Very so that cool. helps me because if I had an idea of how I wanted to shoot, oh, she storyboarded it for me. Thank you, Miosha. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> so that's what's great about having someone that's mm -hmm. on the same you know, uh, plain as you because she creates a storyboard that came out of my head and I didn't even tell her anything. Mm. That's sweet. It, so, you know, I, it, and it makes my job a lot easier because I don't really have to do so much explanation to the actors. They can just look at the storyboard mm -hmm. and say, oh, okay, that's where I'm going to sit. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, that's where I'm looking. Good. Let's go. Now, I've, I've done some acting, but not on the level as YouTube, but I've always, I wouldn't say I'm a horror fiend, but I, I, I tend to like shows that are twist mm. user friendly. There's always some twists. <laughs> In fact, I'd say 80% of the time I can tell how it's going to turn out, who's going to be the one who's backstabbing, who's smiling in your face, really it's just killing you and you know, oh yeah. And meanwhile you find out towards the end, it was this fool all along. What movies, what type of movies do you like? Because I like, uh, you know, someone being chased, <laughs> someone getting hurt, revenge, once they get Ooh. back on their feet. You know, I, I like, I mean, you know, and sometimes the Hallmark, Hall of Fame, you know, stuff where it's family. Yeah. But nine times out of 10, I like a nice chase scene. Yeah. Someone's like running for their life. They're getting away with the skin of their teeth. You know, it's just like, just do, 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 you know. Even if it's slow, it's building up, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and like the script is cool and, you know, and, and, and the person has heart. You know, something like, uh, like the uh, original True Grit. You ever mm -hmm. seen that with John mm -hmm. Wayne? Stuff like that or, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, just, just really gut stuff. Yeah. Is that what you're into? And, and in fact, I'd love to see you in like a nice chase scene. Yeah, I, I, I would love to be. I have the perfect I, yeah. uh, script for you. I need to. We, so I, I, there's two <laughs> types of movies I like. One is 
the, uh, I love the, my favorite movie is The Godfather. So I love all those Italian mafia movies. And I, I, I do like explosions and violence and just something that's raw and dark and get in there. I just, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, so all the classics, you know. Um, you know, thrillers, suspense, you know, I'm a thinker, I like to think, I like twists and turns and uh, murder mysteries and like, ooh, who done it, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't like, I'm not crazy about rom-com and girly chick flick, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I think I'm, I think like a guy, I like, you know, like what my brother would like, I, I like <laughs> movies, because I used to watch it with him, maybe that's why I got like this. But the, uh, the second category I like is, philosophical movies, you know, mm -hmm. spiritual movies, deep movies, um, esoteric movies. Uh, there's not too many of them around, but mm -hmm. when they do come around, it's a trip to watch, you know. Uh, Darren Aronofsky is very good. He's had a few of those movies like that that are so mystical and yogic. The symbolism is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, d I don't know, I get lost in them. I like them. Yeah. yeah. You, you can always tell. But now, you know, what, what I know is most times, sometimes I think I can always tell that a movie's gonna be good in the first five or 10 minutes. Every now and then I screw up and I flip back to it, it's like, man, this would have been a good movie if I watched it from the beginning. <laughs> because sometimes they kind of play with you just to throw you off, just to see, okay, let's see if you're really a movie watcher yeah. and you're gonna stick around. What about you, what, what's your- I'm what's a your big movie? action adventure. I love special effects. Yeah. So I guess, you know, my genres would be action and the next one, horror. Like I'm a good, uh, I like a good horror story with good special effects, something that can scare me or something that can make me go, oh, because I know it's fake. Mm -hmm. So then if they did it and made me believe, then I know it's, it's some really good work. So I, I, I really love horror, love horror films. So now, are you ever, I saw one of the films that you made, which I was thinking kind of remind me of something that I would imagine Rod Sterling would do. The, uh, I forgot the name of it. We what, the hard requittals one? Uh, the one where the guy had a revenge for the caretaker of oh, the yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, Hard requittal, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was more of a, I guess it was a horror thriller, more of a thriller story. But yeah, I think the horror in that writing was more of... Hitchcock? Yeah, it would be horrific sitting there knowing that some guy is getting ready to murder you and you can't move and do anything about it. Mm. I think that's what the, the horror was in that, was the guy was <laughs> basically paralyzed while this guy's sitting there having this conversation with him. Methodically breaking it down. Yeah, so you're I, gonna start feeling stage three of this, yeah. and then you're gonna start losing all voluntary, you know, yeah. this, by the way, this and that about your wife. I did it, I know, you know, you know, it's like, it's cold-blooded, you know. Oh God. Yeah, so it was more psychological yeah, than anything, psychos. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that. I love it. I just enjoyed doing that. Um, so for as far as that being a specific genre for me, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I would like to be in more, say, psychological thrillers Have for you, myself. Could you see yourself doing like a, you know, like an Easter special like a, or a Christmas special where the families come together? It's just mainly like, like a family deal mm -hmm. where prodigal son, prodigal son type of thing. Yep comes back after 30, 40 years of just being a rolling stone, finally comes back home, you know, and it gets all mushy and it's, mm. you know, Christmas time, the trees, all that, that type of thing. I'd hope so, because right now I'm just playing bad guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's the, uh, what's that called, my niche, my... Uh, Look at uh, De Niro, he was always kind of like the bad guy, yeah. now he's like... The, 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 the cute grandfather of right, the right. Yeah, yeah. funny, yeah. funny yeah. Guy, yeah. The Fockers. He's yeah. very good at that, though. Yeah, he yeah. is. Good, good with comedy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to affect? Is, is there mm. a, a particular focal point of your work that you send it out and just try to hit that needle in the haystack of humanity? It's like, this is who I'm talking to. Who is the, I guess, who's the main, I, I know you want to hit as many people mm -hmm. as possible. But who's the main vein that you inject your work into, well, that for, you see? For me, Hollywood has always been a platform to do my life's real work, you know. So for me, I think my life purpose is to inspire and empower people through my work and my presence. So it's very specific. It's just, you know, it's, it's a great platform for that, to be on the global stage and do that. I've always uh, thought my the ideal person that would, uh, you know, watch my stuff or listen to me uh, and would be touched by it is any anyone who's a sincere seeker 
it's, it, this is more spiritual, I think, uh, than just looking for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Someone who's got, who's asking deep questions of their existence and why they're here, what is their purpose, mm -hmm. all that exis existential stuff. And they're genuinely seeking for it. If they find me, they, they, they will find some nuggets of truth there and they mm -hmm. will be inspired to take the next step. Yeah. Um, that's like really on, on, on the deeper level. Uh, but I think the young people, they need to find their spiritual path, you know, so it's always nice for young people to tap in and to be fans and supporters. I think that's always very interesting. Cool. Yeah. What about you? Well, see, I wish I was on her path. Ah! <laughs> for me, it's more, man, because I'm still trying to find my own spirituality mm. and, 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 and harness it and own it. I'm just out there to entertain right now, man. Like, really. like this. He's literally a person who still plays ball. So everyone has their own shot, whether it's that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that three-point, that yep. bank shot. When, when you come down to do your film, are you looking to find people who want to see your finger roll it off the backboard, fall away with 10-footer, ten, ten people in your face and at, at the buzzer? I'm all when, about the slam dunks in your <laughs> face, ooh, baby. I love it. Uh -huh. Just yeah. straight up boom. Yeah, just give it to you raw and emotional and take it as it is. And if you enjoy it, fine. If you don't, go ahead and hate me too, because yeah. that's the idea. I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. So now let's get down to the nitty gritty because we're almost out of time. Mm -hmm. Give me some of your next uh, work, work projects. So, upcoming films. Uh, yeah, so please tune in to the Eternal Hour uh, on iTunes as well as UBN Radio, writing my uh, my first book, The Eternal Gift, and producing my uh, travel show. It's a TV show. There you go. And then they might catch you on Heineken commercials. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've been in all the Heineken commercials for the Super Bowl, the Doseki. That's why I get thirsty Fox, I see Fox promo. Um, <laughs> I am going to be on the new Luminous Beauty infomercial that was that was a national campaign that we did. I did a uh, national campaign for Lancome as well, amongst uh, other commercials. Yeah, you can definitely catch me on d HP. I am did an international campaign for oh, Hewlett nice. Packard as well. Boom. Yeah. You're all over the place. Yeah. Right? You are the nuclear popcorn. Oh, yeah, place. baby. Bring <laughs> it how about, on. How about Ricky? Um, let me see. I'll just go ahead and plug my because website. You just told us about the uh, yeah. upcoming mm. deal that you're doing. Um, if you go to www.richyjacobs.com, you'll see all my acting stuff on there. Um, recently, I just finished, like you said, uh, Hard Requittals. Just mm -hmm. finished uh, It Was an Accident. Mm -hmm. I'm also playing a drug dealer in a movie called Savasana mm -hmm. coming up this year. Mm -hmm. I'm also a mobster in a movie called The Matadors mm. with Eric Roberts. Mm. That's going to be a big one for that me because uh, yeah. it's going to be in November, a bunch of major players. That's going to be probably my one film with a lot of lines with major mm. players that nice. people go, oh, that's Richard okay. Jacobs. This might so be that's, your, that, your ship. It, it might be the break. Well, might you know be. What? I just hope that you keep blowing up, and when you do get that Emmy, make sure you come back here and be on Nuclear Popcorn yeah. for with sure. the Emmy, and I'll even spit shine it. Awesome. For sure, man. All right.